Ever wondered about the interesting secrets behind Valley of the Dolls? This movie from 1967 has some surprising, funny, and sad facts waiting to be discovered. Despite its age, the film still captures people's attention with its honest portrayal of ambition, fame, and how they affect people's lives. As you watch this video, get ready for some revealing information that will make you see the movie differently. Do you know any lesser known facts or stories about this film that interest you? Is there a scene or moment from it that sticks with you? We'd love to hear your favorite memories or personal experiences about this classic, so please share them with us in the comments below. Keep watching for more insights into the unforgettable world of Valley of the Dolls. In 1967, Valley of the Dolls hit screens, leaving a strong impression on audiences. Imagine a story about three women, Anne, Neely, and Jennifer, all chasing success in the entertainment world. This film, based on Jacqueline Suzanne's book, dives into fame, love, and addiction during the 1960s. Valley of the Dolls isn't just any movie, it's a big deal of its time. It bravely tackled tough topics like drug use and the realities of Hollywood life, connecting with people everywhere. Its honest portrayal of the ups and downs of fame grabbed viewers' attention from start to finish. The importance of Valley of the Dolls isn't just in its story, but also in its influence on movies. It broke rules and opened doors for better portrayals of women in film. Its themes of ambition, friendship, and betrayal are timeless, securing its place in movie history. As we explore Valley of the Dolls, we enter the glitz and glamour of showbiz where dreams come true and get shattered. It shows how stories can keep us hooked no matter the era. So whether you're watching this classic again or taking a trip down memory lane, Valley of the Dolls still interests and captivates, leaving a lasting impression on pop culture. Patty Duke playfully called Barbara Parkins Barbara Starkins while they were filming together. At the peak of his career with the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra chose him to host President John F. Kennedy's inaugural gala. He shares a birthday with Norman Jewison, the director of The Thomas Crown Affair, in which he starred. During Hollywood's golden era, he gained fame for his charm and talent. His role in Valley of the Dolls solidified his status as a Hollywood icon, leaving a lasting impression on the silver screen. From struggling as a young actor to becoming a star, he gracefully navigated the ups and downs of show business. Known for his wit and generosity behind the scenes, he endeared himself to colleagues and fans. Despite the challenges of fame, he stayed down to earth, never losing his love for acting. Valley of the Dolls remains a timeless example of his skill, captivating audiences for generations. His influence continues to inspire aspiring actors and filmmakers worldwide, a true reflection of his lasting presence in cinema. In Hollywood history, his name will always be linked with greatness. This is the story of a legend. Judy Garland was initially chosen for the role of Helen Lawson, but was replaced by Susan Hayward due to her drinking and behavior issues. Other contenders for the role included Tammy Grimes and Betty Davis. The author Suzanne made a contractual error when negotiating with Fox, giving them the right to produce a sequel without her approval. When Fox created Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, Suzanne found its tone and style offensive and sued to prevent its release. This led to the studio emphasizing that it was not a sequel to the original film. In 2004, an actor announced retirement from film to focus on theater due to a lack of recent film opportunities and a stronger passion for stage work. Valley of the Dolls, a movie from 1967, shares a significant connection with Lena Horne as both were born in Brooklyn, NY, on the same day. In the 1990s, she served as the celebrity spokesperson for the Psychic Friends Network and hosted its infomercials. When casting the lead roles, several actors were considered, including Pertula Clark, Raquel Welch, Anne Margaret, Candace Bergen, and Jill Ireland. However, Sharon Tate, Patty Duke, and Barbara Parkins ultimately secured the roles. Sharon Tate, Patty Duke, and Barbara Parkins played the lead roles in the movie. The main actor in Valley of the Dolls moved to Seattle with his family, where he started acting in local plays as a child. Later, they relocated to Los Angeles, where his movie career began during his early teens. In a documentary, he opened up about his bipolar disorder diagnosis, sharing his experiences with Stephen Fry, who also has the disorder. Interestingly, the outdoor scenes featuring a railroad train were shot in New York Central Harlem Division in Westchester County, New York, now part of the Metro North Railroad. Valley of the Dolls, based on Jacqueline Suzanne's novel, underwent notable alterations in its transition to film. 
The storyline's setting shifted from post-World War II to the mid to late 1960s, with New York City experiencing a snowy winter instead of a heat wave. This change was prompted by the producer's eagerness to commence filming promptly, disregarding Suzanne's discontent. Despite the alterations, the film maintained its essence. Sharon Tate, a cast member, once expressed her admiration for Thomas Hardy's Tess of the D'Urbervilles and envisioned it as a potential film, a prophecy realized later by Roman Polanski's adaptation. Polanski's film Tess pays tribute to Tate, acknowledging her influence. Amidst these adaptations, Valley of the Dolls secured recognition for its portrayal of the era, earning the Photoplay Gold Medal Award for Best Newcomer in 1965. Valley of the Dolls, a film released in 1967, has several interesting facts surrounding its cast and production. Firstly, in 1996, a lead actor won the Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for Distinguished Lead Performance for his role in Three Hotels at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. Secondly, during a production in 2009 at the Old Vic, an actor experienced memory loss issues due to past drug addiction. To cope, he used an earpiece to receive lines from a prompter during performances of Complicit, which drew criticism and ridicule from the British press. The play featured notable actors like Elizabeth McGovern and David Suchet and was directed by Kevin Spacey. Lastly, in 1998, an actress made a sudden appearance in the mini-movie Scandalous Me the Jacqueline Suzanne Story. This movie depicted the life of Jacqueline Suzanne, the author of the book upon which Valley of the Dolls was based. These incidents provide insight into the challenges and successes experienced by the individuals associated with Valley of the Dolls. Valley of the Dolls, a film from the late 1960s, involves a cast with connections to notable individuals. The lead actress became a grandmother for the second time at the age of 55 as her son Sean Aston and his wife welcomed a daughter in 22. This actress has familial ties with Deborah Tate and Patricia Tate, her sisters, in November 2004, one of the actors was set to appear in the producers in London, but withdrew a week before opening night. Media reports indicated ongoing health issues related to a herniated disc surgery earlier that year. The demanding role in the play contributed to physical strain, leading to injuries, and the use of therapy supports during rehearsals. Despite the effort, the actor was fired from the production. Notably, this individual made a West End debut at the Old Vic in 2009. These aspects add layers to the narrative surrounding Valley of the Dolls, showcasing the personal and professional journeys of its cast. The film's impact extends beyond the screen, touching on family ties and the challenges faced in the world of theater. Valley of the Dolls is a film that has had its share of interesting trivia over the years. One notable fact is that Barbara Parkins, who played Anne Wells, revealed her true age in 2017, ending years of speculation about how old she really was. Another intriguing tidbit involves Jack Nicholson, who, at 30, was once the youngest man to win an Oscar for Best Actor in The Goodbye Girl. However, his record was surpassed by Adrian Brody, who won at the age of 29 in 23. Furthermore, Valley of the Dolls had a casting switch-up before filming began. Sharon Tate was initially set to play Ann Wells, but stepped into the role after Candace Bergen dropped out just two weeks before shooting started. Interestingly, Tate had originally auditioned for the part of Neely O'Hara. These facts shed light on the background of the film and the people involved, adding layers to its production history and casting decisions.